Welcome back to It's a Mimic, where you never know what you're going to get. Today, Mieka and Brad and myself are going to be going to sit down for a special mailbag episode and answer all of Ryan's questions about Star Trek! Exclamation point. What makes this special, though, is that Tyler, Sean, and Adam already answered all of these questions. They were selected because they knew the most about Star Trek, but we were selected for this episode because we know absolutely nothing about Star Trek, and we refuse to learn anything about it. <laughs> absolutely. I don't need another fandom. I'm done. I'm like I, I've got so many. <laughs> a little disclaimer. It's not that I dislike Star Trek. I just don't have the space for it. I don't have the Same. bandwidth. I don't have and the I look at capacity. it, and it's daunting. I'm like, I don't need to take all of this in. I'm done. Mm-mm. I'm just going to have an intentional blind spot here. Yep. It's like when someone tells me I should watch Critical Role, and this is going to be a, a hard thing to say on, out on a D&D podcast, but mm. I don't have I don't have the time. I, I, <laughs> you, Megan. I, gave it, I gave that a shot, and I was like, nope, I ain't devoting three and a half to four hours a week to this. Not, yeah, yeah, I tried. I tried once, and I'm like, I feel like this is going to take up that time, and I just don't have that time. You know, I really don't. It's like I might as well just watch One Piece and bang my head against a wall, you know what I mean? <laughs> So, but no, I agree. This is nothing against Star Trek. This is just no. three people who have different fandoms and just did not put the bandwidth into it. That's yeah, all. exactly. This yeah. is not a Star Trek bash episode. This is just no, a Star really Trek yeah. ignorance episode. <laughs> all right. Well, that being said, strap in while we all answer these very specific questions with absolutely zero knowledge about what the fuck we're talking about. But before we get started, I want to ask, what do you know about the Star Trek universe? Uh, the 46 seasons of television, the 13 movies, and the dozens of games, conventions, and merch. Like, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Like, what do you know? What is your Star Trek experience as a whole? Good question. Should we roll for it? Sure. We've all got dice, right? I do. Ooh, and that's 20. Oh, look at you. Starting off strong. I can't roll them when I'm a player, but sure enough for the podcast, there it is. (laughs) I rolled two 20s at the table on Sunday. Mika will remember this. I rolled two 20s at the table on Sunday. Uh, both of them for my initiative. Oh, that's a bad yeah. feeling. Sorry, I'm trying to get this fucking dice out of the bottom of my cup. Well, I rolled a seven. <laughs> I rolled an eight. So good start for me, Ike and I. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I'll start off. Um, I had no idea it was 46 seasons. Yeah. I think I could maybe name two or three of like the full like runs of what they are. Maybe, but unlikely. And never watched a movie. Played a mobile game once. I don't even remember what it's called. But it was like a little shipbuilder one. And then that is the extent of it. Oh, I know Red Shirts Always Die. That's about the extent of my Star Trek knowledge. Yeah, I know yeah. that one because of like it's a trope that has followed all other like science fiction. every piece of media at this point, yeah. Going further. Um, so I know that that does come from Star Trek, which is congratulations to them. Um, I I did watch a little bit of Voyager. I did. Okay. Um, because my dad was a Star Trek watcher and so was my brother. Right. So a little bit of it Voyager. Was on in the house sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, and a little bit of Deep Space Nine. And that was about it. And then I did watch the new movies that, like the newer ones that came oh, out. Oh, yeah, yeah. That were in theater. I did go and see those. Oh, um, yeah. And I do remember watching a movie about the Borg when I was a kid, but I don't actually remember the movie itself. So, so you're the veteran then. I feel like I might know the most, unless Mieka can top me on that one. <laughs> phrasing. No. Are we not doing um, phrasing? <laughs> I remember in college, my professor, he brought up how, like, Star Trek had the first interracial kiss. It was, like, a sociology class where we were talking about it, and he brought it up. Um, might, not, might not have been the first interracial kiss, but it was, like, a big deal that it happened. Other than that, I know that Spock has, like, a very sharp features on his face. <laughs> I, I, Sounds I, like we're I, starting strong. I know this, he's a Vulcan, which is why he has those sharp features on his face. Yes. <laughs> and I know the little hand sign that I can't do. I, I feel like do that it right now. Start. Yeah, I can't do oh, it. I know the hand sign. I can do the hand sign. Yeah. I, I feel like Zoom is going to recognize this as me putting my hand up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so. there it is. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, you can do that now with the new Zoom, which is really annoying. Let me lower that hand. (laughs) All right, team. Now that we know how veteranized we are on the knowledge that is the Star Trek, let's start rolling some dice. So let's go in the order that we just rolled. If we get to roll first, so Brad, roll. Sounds good. Roll first. 
Uh, oh, we got some cock dice. Uh, four. Question number four. Are the Borg a cool idea that never really planned out? I've heard they got nerfed by the writers a lot, so they could be beaten. So never were the threat they could be or should have been. What are your thoughts? Um, I know the, about a Borg cube, but I'm just going to go. I'm, <laughs> I, I know I, that their ship was a cube. <laughs> yeah, that's about all I know. But this is, it's a mimic. So no thoughts, just opinions. So I'm just going to go at it here. The Borg were a terrible idea. They never should have existed. Imbalance, poor writing, never should have existed. That's my thought. So, I really don't know anything else. <sighs> And, like, to be fair, I, as I said, like, I did watch a Borg movie when I was a kid. I know that there was a big um, Captain Jean-Luc Picard arc where he became a Borg at some point. Um, I'm just going to say that they're over-sexualized for no reason. Um, and yet very unattractive. And Mieke will respect that. <laughs> <laughs> Do I agree How that they they're... catch me so well? Were they, were they planned out? Well, I couldn't tell you. Um, I mean, but, like... If their rule was it to make Borg, but they made John Luke Picard a Borg, then I don't know. I I feel like that's a little broken in mine. But um, I like the idea that they uh, had to be nerfed. I like putting video game terms on anything. So yeah, let's just nerf Borg. But but that's They're the thing. OP. If if you had to take them away from being OP, then you did it wrong. Like then you, those yeah, questions answered themselves. In the first place, yeah, yeah. you had to change it partway through. <laughs> Get ungoofed. What about you, Mika? I feel like. They were a cool idea, but they didn't have the right people pushing it. There you go. <laughs> That's a product manager comment if I ever did hear one. That seems like it's like a, a corporate issue at Star Trek. <laughs> this Star is Trek's not a writer's issue. Yeah, corporate. not a writer's issue. <laughs> no, um, never a threat or should have been. So I mean, contact corporate Star yeah. Trek headquarters. <laughs> Call your boss. Yeah. <laughs> Just contact P- HR and they'll uh, forward it on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to roll. Do it. Uh, roll the two. Go roll and roll right away. So what do you think of the J.J. Abrams movies? What was one done? What was done well and where did they fall short? So I'm assuming the J.J. Abrams are the newer ones that were made, right? Yes. Yeah. Um. So to answer this one first, I coming in blind to those movies, fantastic. I feel like this is going to be a contentious answer to this question because i went into this not knowing anything about star trek or having any feelings or thoughts or emotions that would sway me from enjoying the film a as it stood um so i i enjoyed them i thought they were action-packed i thought there was a lot of fun with those characters that you do recognize um i like that the old spock got to return um i do know that was a big that was a big deal that he got to be in those movies again so i mean fan service is always appreciated by non-fans yeah, I'm a big fan of fan service, right? But I, I was excited for it because people around me were excited for it. But as a non-contentious third party, I thought it was there were pretty good movies. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, I remember uh, the news talking about J.J. Abrams and his movies, and everyone was very proud of him. So I'm going to say uh, a lot of things were done well. And... <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. No more. No further questions. The hype said it was good, so it was good. It was great. Here's what I will say about it: having not seen the movies, it, they can't have been worse than his take on Star Wars. So That's fair. anything I mean, that he could have done with Star Trek must have been outstanding in comparison to his treatment of Star Wars. Like, and I will say something that they he did get right was casting. What's his name? Uh, Zach, Zachary Quint Zachary Quinto yeah. Yeah. as Spock. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, that was good. That was good. I remember seeing clips yeah. from the trailer, and yeah, he looked like he was... <laughs> and knowing him from uh, the, his other works, like, that is a great casting. That was a great cast. Like, I, I don't think you could have found a better person to do that. And, you know, internet, if there's a better person to have done that, you can yell at me, and that's okay. Megan, did you say that was a hard good? <laughs> hard good. <laughs> <laughs> better than a soft good. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> They did a hard good. <laughs> I love All that. Right. Yeah, use that. All right, Mika, go uh, for it. Give All her right. a roll, Mika. My turn. Oh, I just rolled a two. Let me try again. All right, 14. 14. If you could make a Star Trek series, what would you make it about? Villains? So what kind of villains? Um, crew and captain makeup? <laughs> what is this ship about? What are they doing? Um, what themes or plot would you like to have? That's a loaded question. Um, Make your own Star Trek, Mika. Go. <laughs> right. 
Star Trek is going to take take place in space. Mm. <laughs> oh, bold. bold <laughs> Never once have I seen that. <laughs> Mine's going to take place in this galaxy, though. So I feel like the villains live on Mars um, because Mars would just look like a place where the villains would be. Um, <laughs> crew and captain makeup. Uh, everyone has to be handsome. And okay, that's a me, I feel like, staple. Yeah. Everybody has to be handsome. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and respectable. Yeah. Uh, let's not forget about that. No one is named Gregory. Um, <laughs> every- <laughs> King Gregory. Fuck Gregory. Jeez. <laughs> um, uh, let me see. What is this ship about and what are they doing? Um, they're time hopping. I feel like uh, they're messing with time. They're trying to figure it out and they're studying it. They're scholars. Yeah. They're scholars. So they're (laughs) not going back to kill Hitler? (laughs) Stop it. (laughs) (laughs) They're scholars and they're studying and they are just trying to to learn um, and apply. Uh, I need some enemies to lovers going on in each episode. (laughs) Of course, you're a lover of the lover's enemies. <laughs> Everyone, enemies, the lover trope. That, <laughs> Everyone's that got a thing for each other, and uh, yeah, there we go. That's my that's my Star Trek. Yeah, I feel like there isn't a, a good enough love story in Star Trek that I am aware of from my well known wealth of knowledge of Star Trek. So <laughs> I do feel like it would be a Star Cross lovers, haha, storyline uh... of some kind. Uh, floating around space, whether it be that they're in different galaxies just trying to find each other, um, or again, enemies to lovers, we love that. Uh, mm-hmm. we watched that stupid movie last night. What was it? The <laughs> Dale and Tucker versus Evil or whatever? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And that's played from the perspective of the quote unquote villain, but they're actually not villains. There's just a series of awful accidents that made them look like they were the villains. Mm-hmm. So I definitely <laughs> want to bring that into space, and that would be my Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I think if I'm making one, it's going to be animated. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And like, I think you're going to put it out to a Japanese studio for animation. I think that would be fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Have like a um, little anime. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. villains. I'm gonna just straight off rip off this uh, Cybermen from Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be the villains. Something new, something fresh. Uh, I imagine and... the Cybermen from Dragon Ball Z, which are two very different things. Very different. <laughs> but so it'll be the Cybermen from Doctor Who in the Dragon Ball Z style. There you that? go. Done. I can accept that. Yeah. Um, villains. Uh, we covered crew and captain makeup. I think it sounds like Star Trek is the one series that has actually done like female leads really well and female character writing really well. So I feel like we should have a female character or a non-binary character as the lead as the captain. Yeah. Um, and I would just have them literally going doing pod races. That's what I'm doing. We're doing pod races. We're ripping off all sorts of other fandoms. We're just gonna make that happen. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> you want the Star Trek Star Wars crossover yeah, basically, to piss people off? My, yeah, okay. My idea is they're just going to have their big ship will just be a hangar for little lower ships and they're going to go around the gal- galaxy doing races. More like um, wacky racers style. Yeah. Yeah. You're why not? For you. I thought it sounds like something Trek fans would love, hey? I think so. Yeah. Perfect. All right, Brad. All right. Well, next question. <laughs> yeah. Roll dice, Brad. Another natural 20. My goodness. Ooh. I'm going to throw this dice right in the garbage because it's never going to roll another one again. <laughs> Uh, so the question is, with my limited knowledge, I thought it would only be fair to give you a chance to vent on subjects that I missed. Please vent away. Oh, boy. This is going to be a tough one, given my limited knowledge. But uh, I'm just going to vent at the fact that Star Trek has way too much shit to catch up on. Way too many episodes, way too many movies, way too much going on. How am I supposed to get into a series with this much history? That's my main vent. I feel like something that I've heard a lot of that I will partake in, like put this on the internet as well, is that I think that the series had to fix itself as it went along. Because they broke their own rules a lot, uh, whether it came to like time travel and or like, you know, just how they operate, how they phase, how they like fight, how their ships work, the layout of their ships. I feel like that there was a little lack of consistency in their outfits. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm going to vent on. There you go. I mean, if you run that long, how are you supposed to have any sort of consistency? You got to change stuff up eventually or it gets boring. Oh, man. I'm just saying lack of consistency. Um, I think I'm going to vent about the... um problematic fandom people 
Well, forever oh. or no ways. <laughs> There's <laughs> always a problematic one. fandom, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so insert my rant on problematic fandom, people within Star Trek. Like, calm down. Everyone wants to enjoy it who wants to enjoy it. Don't take it too seriously. Like, people have fun. Absolutely. Yeah. It's fictional space fantasy at the end of the day. How seriously can you take it? Don't right. kink shame. Let me like what I like. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Let me hate what I hate. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to roll. Do it. Wells, which Star Trek had the best crew and what made them the best? So, mm. as I said, I've only watched a few of them. Um, I'm going to save Voyager because I fucking love Captain Janeway. Um, she had the iconic beehive hairstyle um, and was just fucking bitching. You know what I mean? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Didn't require a love story to go forward. She was just a rocking captain. And you know what? I'm going to just say that her crew was equally as awesome. So that's what I'm going to say. Perfect. Mika? Right. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> what, what was the best season? Best, best Star Trek crew. Crew. Oh, okay. Do you, want me to um, name, do you want me to name the ones that I know and you can choose one? I will not know. That's what I mean. Right. So you can okay, just choose yeah. one by the Go name ahead. if you want to? Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Deep Space Nine. Voyager. Uh, that's all I know. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Okay. This, this, okay. Well, this is what I do now. I know that Whoopi Goldberg was on Star Trek, right? Yep. Uh, I'm going to say the same crew as you then. Next Generation. And it was mostly oh. because it was the most people who I actually know. There, there you go. <laughs> Specifically <laughs> Patrick Stewart. That's why that was my choice. But also, oh, okay. like, Jonathan Frakis is fantastic. Michael Dorn is great. Will Wheaton was in it. Like, a lot of people who I know, and, like, other things that they do. So that's yeah, why that's TNG fair. is going to be the one that I'm going to shout out. I don't know anything about the actual crew, but I know the cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I know Whoopi Goldberg was was on Star Trek for a while there, so her crew. <laughs> yeah, we'll call Perfect. her out. Yeah, done. All right. Well, all right. Roll that dice, Nika. All yeah. right. Uh, ten. What lessons have you gotten from Star Trek? Um, you know what? Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> That's what Perfect. I've learned. <laughs> you know what? Like, to be fair, Seriously, like, every episode probably has a lesson to be learned in leadership and yeah. teamwork. Mm-hmm. And everybody has a role. Everybody has an, a purpose for existing. But, I mean, I guess for me, like, the best lesson I've learned is never wear a red shirt in space. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's it yeah. <laughs> I think I generally do have a somewhat like genuine lesson taken from Star Trek and that is simply that it is great to push against the edges and not be afraid to you know do what you really care about right Star Trek pushed a lot of boundaries you mentioned earlier Mika the interracial kiss mm-hmm. um, they've covered a lot of fairly controversial topics they really took on um, you know capitalism and American patriotism face face on right just dove right in there and said like is it actually good that we put our own above others um i think star trek has done a really good job of kind of being on the leading edge as far as hollywood is concerned for you know social welfare and you know inclusivity mm-hmm. agreed <clears throat> all right is it back to me it is sir what? all right uh two we already did that one mm-hmm. 20 already did that one eight who are your favorite star trek characters um, I mentioned it earlier, but Wesley Crusher, because it was um, Will Eaton. I thought he was funny in the cl- little bits of clips that I've seen. I always love Patrick Stewart, so Captain Jean-Luc Picard. And those are about all the characters I know. I kind of mentioned uh, John Frakas as Riker and Dorn as Worf. Those are ones, you know, just from... Oh, and Brett Spiner as Data, right? All of those guys are guys that I know from just pop culture and time, but... Those yeah, I was going to mention Data because, of course, I was going to say Captain Janeway because, like... Yeah, absolutely. She, she's a goddess. She's fantastic, but, too. Um, but, like, Data was the only other one that I, I mentally remember. Mm-hmm. Other than, like, your cla- classic, like, Kirk and yes. Spock and Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Like, mm-hmm. those are the only names that I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of any more off the top of my head, either. Um, <clears throat> I know that there was... Uh, an actress that recently passed, I think it was last year, who was on Star Trek. Oh, I, I do not know her name. Um, but she would be my favorite because I felt like she paved the way for a lot of uh, black women actresses. So, absolutely. Yep. I just forgot LeVar Burton was uh, Jordy LaForge. 
I just clicked in my brain. Love LeVar Burton. Okay. That's that's the gentleman who wears the visor, correct? Yes. The eye the eye thing. The eye the eye cover, Cyclops <laughs> yeah. style. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also uh hosted Reading Rainbow for a number of years. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 the uh next generation yeah 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 next generation okay see i'm getting it I'm picking i feel shit like up. that's the only one that i actually now that i'm thinking we're talking about it more and more that's like the one i actually know enough about because i think it was on uh tbs in like afternoons after school yeah i would come home and it would sometimes be on and i wouldn't always turn it off <laughs> mm -hmm. oh lord all right my turn you're up yep 15 best star trek movies um I, as I said, I do remember watching a Borg movie when I was a kid. I'm going to Google it right now. Uh, yeah. Borg movies. Star Trek movies and TV shows. Uh, that is the TV show. This is stupid. Borg Wikipedia. Videos of the Borg. Google, you're failing me right now. <laughs> <laughs> what movies are the Borg in? Uh, the, the internet is just being shitty. I don't know how Excellent. to. Oh, that's because I'm using Bing. What the? Bing, Bing. <laughs> Get off of Bing. <laughs> you know better. <laughs> but it has built-in AI. No, literally, all I had to type into Google was what movies are the Borg in, and immediately I got Star Trek First Contact, which is correct. <laughs> the, the Best of Both Worlds, which is correct. Dark <laughs> Frontier, which I believe is on Netflix right now. Nice. Anyways, and then there was The Wrath of Khan. So, yeah. Anyways, I, I think the first Contact one... Uh, I would say that one because I think I remember watching that a few times when I was a kid. So I will yeah. I will say that that's one of the best ones. If I'm not going to pick the obvious like better high quality graphics ones that we just recently got, you know what right. I mean? If yeah. you can go back a bit, yeah. Mika, any shout outs? Um, lessons. This was the wait a minute. Well, best no, no, we're looking at movie. best movie. Um, how about okay? So I think Sun came out. Um, the J.J. Abrams one. I'm just gonna say so that. The I new, probably, yeah, the newer fan favorite ones. Yeah, yeah, I probably made a lot of people mad, but I just say that because it was uh, it was a big deal. A lot of people were talking about it, and it made people excited. So they were we also digestible for us folk who did not have any previous Star Trek knowledge. Like I could have just mm -hmm. go, I didn't really have a lot of knowledge from Star Trek other than your basic regular fandom stuff. But I still enjoyed them as film A's. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Um, I just Googled Star Trek movies, and I was going to pick based off of which one had the best box art or poster art. And surprisingly, <laughs> they nailed it in one with the first one, Star Trek The Motion Picture. It's got this big rainbow over the faces of the cast as they're being beamed up or down or something. Just looks great. Oh, okay. I forgot how many people I actually remember from that one, right? You have William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, George Takei. There are some oh, people a, there from that one I know, right? She's so, a classic, yeah. All that stuff I forgot. So yeah, that was, I think the first movie, it came out in 79, Star Trek The Motion Picture. So why not start with the best? It's all been downhill from there and I'm standing by it. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> all right. All right, my turn. Mm -hmm. 17. What do you think about the morality of the Star Trek teleporters? They technically kill the person who uses it, right? Would you use one? Um, teleporters? I would use it because I just don't like walking. So therefore, <laughs> I think the idea. Really <laughs> there it I is. Gonna, I was going to say, if the princess in the group does not say I would use that teleporter, I don't even know who would. Yeah, what, what are we even doing here, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, I, yeah. Uh, it's cool. So there you go. Like, yeah, it is a really interesting. Put me in the teleporter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting theory, right? You're being de-atomized and re-atomized at a molecular level is kind of the idea. Yeah. Well, the whole like, concept is that like it. So I do know this one, weirdly enough. It's like yep. the whole the science behind it is that like the, and, uh, the internet's going to correct me if I have this wrong. I know that. Um, but technically the way it works is it takes a, like basically like a photocopy of your body and all yep. on a molecular level holds that as data, destroys your body and reanimates it somewhere else. Cool. Oh, oh, like re-downloads it. I'm, I'm fine with it. Download. <laughs> I'm fine with it. If I could re, if I could delete myself and make a new one and that one shows up in Maui, I would do it in a heartbeat. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, it seems that it too. contains all the memories. It's effectively the same person, but... I feel like the first time I would use one, I would be like, I don't want to do this. Don't make me do it. But then once I do it the first time, I'm like, oh, I didn't die. Great. I would have cool. no problem after that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd watch somebody else do it first, right? That's true. Yeah. I'm like, oh, successful. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's Here all right. we go. What's the worst that could happen? I end up with an arm on my back? Buckle in. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, Lord. All right, who rolled that one? Me again? Brad, back to you. Uh, Back to me, yeah. Uh, 15. We just did that one not long ago. 19. Would you rather live in Star Trek or Star Wars universe? Ooh. Mm. I mean, I know more about Star Wars, but I also am not a big fan of the Star Wars universe. It's not somewhere I would want to be. So I'm going to say actually Star Trek. I was going to say, like, doesn't, like, Earth exist technically yes, in the Star Earth Trek exists. universe? Yes, Like, we are technically in mm-hmm. a fictional... We we live there right now. Yeah, it's set in our universe. <laughs> Just not We're real. currently alive there. <laughs> we yeah. ruined one of your questions. We currently live here. <laughs> <laughs> we do live in the Star Trek universe. And you know what? Now I see it. It's not that great. I'll try Star Wars. Let's try something new. That's what I mean. That's my answer. I'm like, I'm sorry. I've lived Star Trek. I'm out of here. Take me to Star Wars different. land. Like, shit. <laughs> Um, shit. I don't know. I would. <laughs> There's a lot have of you, fighting wait. going on in Star Wars. <laughs> have you watched all the Star Wars, Mieka? That's a good question to ask. No. Okay, because like I have, and I'm, I'm yeah. assuming Brad has. Yeah, every single one. Yeah. Absolutely. So Mieka, not all of them yet, but you know more about Star Wars than you do Star Trek. Yeah. 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 Um. <clears throat> I'm just going to say Star Trek because within Star Wars, there's just like a lot of war going on. People are just trying to hurt each other. I feel like in Star Trek, there's tension there, but maybe people are just happier. <laughs> maybe I mean, it's set in this happy. timeline we've established, so uh, you tell me. Oh, Lord. I don't, I don't know. Can't help you. Can't, it's, all, can't, it's all bad. Can't fucking help you. <laughs> all right. Uh, my turn? Your turn. Yep. Oh, nine. What episodes are your favorite? Oh, let me tell you. Let me count the number of episodes that are my favorite. <laughs> um, the first one <laughs> and the last one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my or no, God. I'm going to give that journalized music question like an answer of just like, I like all of them it's yeah. so hard for me to decide you know what i, I don't mean? have like... any favorites they're all my favorite child oh my <laughs> i i watched this one episode with adam i guess it's like it's a series or whatever i don't know i watched it with them was it over the summer or something like that uh but they were on this planet people kept forgetting things and i was like oh that was a nice episode only star um star trek episode i've ever like watched and like paid attention to and like compre you know i comprehended it <laughs> but um that was my favorite <laughs> there you go i'm actually thinking about one that i've actually seen and actually have a memory of and i had to look it up it's from the second season like it's one of the old old episodes but it had these creatures called tribbles that were basically little balls of fur mm. and that is the one that left an impact that i could actually remember that it was an episode so i'm gonna go with that one it's called trouble with tribbles apparently that sounds really cute but yeah, it's little balls of fur and i think they were really problematic but i don't remember enough of the episode i just remember they had little fur balls in them weirdly As enough a kid, that stood out to me all i really pictured in my head is what was that movie that called like um dead space or whatever not dead space dead space, dead space is, is a video game no there has what is what am i thinking of i don't know uh, uh it had it it had joey from friends in it oh uh, not gremlins then no and then it was that <laughs> whole like um it's when the robot wants to kill the family on the ship it's not ringing a bell oh my god the internet is gonna kill me um i was thinking red dwarf but it's not that no i did watch red dwarf when i was a kid with my dad oh, I so watch good that um it's gonna this is gonna bother me to the point where i'm gonna have to you're gonna have to look it up <laughs> i'm yeah i'm trying to look it up though but i don't lost in space lost in space okay when you're talking about like the episode with the uh-huh. little gremlins all i could think about was that movie and like them exploring like the planet surface in that movie but what a weird fucked up movie that was. Anyways, I don't think I ever uh, actually saw it. It was really good. It has Matthew LeBlanc in it, I'm pretty sure. There yeah. Yeah. Wasn't it like a Netflix series? Am I thinking? Or that it was it? Like... Yes. They, uh, that was recent, though. There was a movie the... way before that. Yeah. It was like a uh... spin off to that, exist- the existence of that movie. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if you ever want to watch that TV series, that movie was what kicked that off. Yeah. Okay. That was back in the 90s. Yeah. Mm. All right. I think it's my turn again. Rolling nine. Do we do nine? Yeah. Yep. Uh, we did two. Thirteen. All right. Did Worf ever get to be a bad A? Why do you think he never got fired? 
And I'm assuming um, that means badass. And I'm someone assuming, didn't want to unless bad A is a specific term to something else, but my assumption was badass. Let's roll with it. Badass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Worf was supposed to be what he was supposed to be. Um, there probably wasn't enough room for him to grow even more um, in his character development. So I think he did. And why do you think he never got fired? He's just a lovable guy at the end of the day. I, I like that answer, Mika, but I'll tell you the real answer as to why you never got fired. Nepotism. Mm-hmm. Actually? Uh, is that a thing? Do you no, know? I'm totally making it up. <laughs> I, I had no what? idea. I had no clue. <laughs> Who's Worf's dad? Like... <laughs> I have no clue. I don't think he has a dad. <laughs> don't they reproduce from like, well, I don't know. I have no clue. <laughs> Nepotism just how feels like the right answer reproduce. as to why he never got fired. Yeah. And they probably never let him be a full badass because he embarrassed everybody else. Those are my two answers. That's true. So, if, if, remind me correctly, Worf is the one, like, the alien the wrinkly race. Forehead. The wrinkly forehead. I was going to say wrinkly forehead, and I was trying to find the PC way of saying that. I don't think that there is. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, with the alien wrinkly forehead. Yeah. So, aren't they supposed to be, like, the strongest fighters on the planet? Yeah, I think like, that's supposed super to be... combatants, war is life. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't think I've ever seen him fight, to be honest with you. So, like, I can't just, I can't speak to whether he I won think he his used that giant blade with like a handle in the middle that you used two hands on it I think that I've seen that weapon. in Big Bang Theory yes yeah I think that was his I think a Those lot of my yeah I think a lot of my Star Trek knowledge Which right is... now is coming from Big Bang Theory Big Bang Theory yeah that show gets a lot of hate and I understand why but that's the show I still want like oh I don't watch. care I watch it all the time I like, do too it's fantastic I and... watch it for the girls though like I watch it yeah. for Penny oh absolutely and... yeah yeah absolutely yeah, I'm here for the women. I'm here for the ladies, guys. And I'll bet you Worf was too. And that's why you don't think he's a badass. There yeah, you go. Isn't Mike that drop. what made him a badass, though? <laughs> was the fact that he was there for the ladies. Yeah, it was probably men asking these questions. <laughs> and, and why did he never get fired, Megan? It was nepotism, right? That's the right answer? Yeah, probably nepotism. <laughs> yeah, it just feels right. <laughs> knowing Worf, and uh, knowing all, everything that I know about Worf, and I don't know a lot, um, nepotism. <laughs> Knowing everybody I know in my life who should have been fired and wasn't, nepotism. Nepotism. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Brad. All right, let's do this. Uh, that'll be a three. Have you seen the Orville? If so, is there things that you di- it did you think Star Trek should incorporate? What storylines did you enjoy? If you haven't seen it, I would recommend it. Um, So long story short on that one, Orville is actually the one I've been interested in checking out. One, because it takes itself less seriously. And when I want to watch television, I don't want to take myself seriously these days. Yeah. Yeah, Um, It it actually looks fantastic. Um, Despite all of the um, Seth MacFarlane-ism of it, um, and all the fire he gets under for his comedy. I, it's still, every time I see clips from that show or see anything covering it, I'm like, that, I still I keep putting it on my watch list. I just never get to it. Hmm. So for the rest of the question, I can't get to why, uh, or, you know, what? what it should incorporate or anything like that. Maybe more humor is what I'd say. Star Trek is, really does seem very flat. So it needs more humor. Now, let me fill in these gaps for you. So when you're talking about Orville, I'm thinking like Redenbacher. So we're talking yeah. oh, popcorn, popcorn here. I Excellent. went straight popcorn. Right? So, <laughs> and you know what? What lessons did popcorn tell me? That under pressure, I can become delicious. Like, you, you know, um, under heat. And tasty covered in butter. Yeah, you know. Hey, man. <laughs> we don't king shame here. <laughs> yeah, right. We don't. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, I recommend more popcorn should be involved in Star Trek. It's a delicious treat. Oh, in Star Trek. I thought you were going somewhere else with that. No, man. This is a Star Trek episode, Brad. Get on my level. Uh, Highly recommend. Are you done, Megan? I'm done. Go for it. Yeah. I'm done being an asshole. No, you were. That was great. Uh, I think Star Trek could use a lot of crossover stuff, so sure. I don't know what the Orville is, but thank you for the recommendation. Yeah, it's um, basically a um, it's a parody of Star Trek uh, written by and starring um, Seth. Um, what's his name? Why am I uh, oh, uh, McFarlane. Or Seth McFarlane. Oh, okay. Well, why not? You know, I think it's I on like Disney Star Plus, Trek- actually. Huh? I think you can watch it on Disney Plus if you got it. Oh, okay. Not that we do ads here, but uh, yeah, I keep seeing it recommended there. Well, there you go. Okay. Well, then, yeah, let's let's see that happen because I feel like Star Trek sometimes takes itself too seriously. So yeah, it's that's some fun stuff. <laughs> Love that. All right, All right, right Megan. Six. 
Oh, excellent. I have heard very mixed things on the newer Star Wars Trek, Star Wars Trek series. Yes, the Star Wars Trek series, <laughs> my favorite. Star Wars is Trek. Star Wars. A trek through the world the, the of Star trek Wars. Trek of the Wars. Um, <laughs> moving on. Picard, other than the third season and Discovery, I have not heard any good things about mostly the red letter media, mostly from red letter media. Do you feel the same or are these people just liking not liking the direction. Okay, here's the thing. I did watch Picard. Now that now that it's been spoken out loud and I see it, I did watch the Picard. And by Picard, I mean the first season and then never watched it again after that. Mostly because I felt like the Picard series was 100% set fan service and I had no idea what was going on. So did yeah, not much care for it. I knew the actors that were returning because of like so social media and other things. But when it comes to the series, I had no idea why they were there or how they were there or give a hoot why they were there other than the fact that Picard was seeking people, right? So... I did not get into it because as an outsider looking in too much fan service to the point of not being able to understand it. So I can imagine that if an entire series is built off of fan service that people did not require, then people would not enjoy it as much. Um, my parents love Discovery. So mm. my mom, weirdly enough, dad, big sci-fi guy. My mom, not so much. My mom is a, I don't know, what is, what is a fucking TV charmed kind of mom? You know what I mean? Like oh, she's yeah. a Excellent. soap opera mom. Yeah. Um loves discovery my dad was like this is a new series you should just watch it and like tricked her into watching it and she fucking loves it Perfect. so it's just like one of those so i'm imagining that again so they're great because they brought your parents together on a show they it could brought my on. parents together to watch a sci-fi tv series that my mom probably never would have watched previously so Aww. we can wrap this question up the new series are perfect no 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 notes no notes <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, any thoughts on this question Mika? Um. I think the newer Star Trek is great. <laughs> I like the aesthetic. <laughs> I think you would like Picard, actually. It's more, it's way more of a drama than it is a, a like sci fi. Okay. Yeah. Then honestly, I would probably, I would be interested in that. Adam might hate it though. Drama. I don't know if Adam would like it because, again, fan service for people that actually watch the TV series. So he might have feelings about it. Mm -hmm. But. I thought it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'll say. Fans of anything sci-fi or fantasy are going to hate whatever's new because it changes what they know. So sure. to answer the last yeah. part of that question uh, about all the not good things heard about it, don't listen to fans of something when you want to know. Listen to casuals. We'll give you a real answer. I love it. <laughs> love that advice. <laughs> all right. Who's rattling next? Uh, Mika. Do you, have a, do you have a D6 in front of you? Because there's only six questions left. I do not. <laughs> God damn it, Mika. <laughs> All I right, we'll roll until you get one. <laughs> All right. You said there's only six um, questions left? Yep. Yeah. There right, we go. I rolled a 20. We answered that. 11. Did we do 11? No, we didn't nope. do 11. Go oh, for it. There we go. All right. Most overrated Star Trek things. Um. All right. They're uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah bore me <laughs> yeah i feel like it's too serious i feel like they're working all the time and i'm not here for it so there you go i know they're famous i know it's like oh my gosh like that's the star trek thing but it's a, yeah it's like the, the staple of star trek is their goddamn uniforms you know yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna target another staple the damn mm. phasers what kind of weapon is a phaser pathetic <laughs> little handheld hey, stun gun it was the i don't first... want it First Come ever cool. Hey man, it's the first ever late hand laser gun. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's, it's played out. Find something cooler. I remember my dad giving me a long speech when I was a kid, basically talking about why Star Trek was phenomenal. And it was because they were the ones that piloted a lot of things that happened in our futures. Like they were they had cell phones before we did. Yeah. Like mm. small weird things like yeah, that. Yeah, a lot of the concepts from Star Trek became actual prototypes in the real world. In real world. I thought that was really cool. But and my thing my overrated item is the fact that it's cool when people can speak Klingon. Yeah, that's it's not cool. I don't care. It's just as bad as people who speak Elvish. Learn, don't... learn a real language. There are so many real ones of real people you could talk to in the world. Yeah. Learn a real language. Don't care. I know that we're going to piss somebody off because we're like, I just learned how to speak Klingon. And you know what? Proud of you. That takes a lot of effort. But mm -hmm. it's not for me. No. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. All, All right, right I do have a D6 in front of me, so I'll roll that. Yeah, and then just go top down. Yeah. All uh, right. Uh, 18. Alien race you'd most like to see, or most like to bone in Star Trek. Most like to bone. Um, hold on. Let me go to the Googles. One second. This, I don't this know one requires a Google. I'm going to, yeah. Hold gonna... on. I said the Tribbles. Am I going to get in trouble for being a furry? <laughs> <laughs> we said we would kink shame, but furries is my line. <laughs> <laughs> it's most people's line. 
Hold on. <laughs> Aliens in Star Trek. Oh, no, that guy's blue. That guy's way too veiny. Hold on. Let me find something interesting here. Hold on. There's one here that looks like Squidward. What's that? Looks like the I'm sexy Squidward meme. I'm afraid to touch meme. my computer because I don't want to mess anything up. So I can't look up anything. <laughs> All good. I, what I'll do for you is I'll name some of them and you can just say yes or no. Which one sounds? <laughs> All right. Hold on. There's one here called a troll that looks almost human. I'm just going to go with that. I'm not so adventurous. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to stick with my human What looks the most human race? that's not human? Fair enough. Oh, hold on. They have changelings. There you go, Mika. How about a changeling? It can be whatever you want it to be. I will accept that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, a... All right. Was... Shapeshifter. <laughs> All right. There are list of Star Trek aliens. Here we go. Yeah, I found one. Oh, the Gorn. They look like lizard folk from uh, D&D, but mm. way more from the 70s. Oh, my God. I would like to point out that the Wikipedia I found has like a hundred different. Excellent. Wow. Which is not what I'm going to use here. The top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is Tribbles was number one. Oh, there you go. Uh, the Dominion, whatever that is. The Kardashians. I think that's where the oh, Kardashians came from. <laughs> uh, the Ferengi, the Gorn, the Nacine, and the Baku. I'm going to look up the Kardashians because I need to know if that's right. Cool. I need yes. to know this Please. as well. <laughs> Star Trek. Oh, they're... Kardashian, not Kardashian. It, they're they're the ones that kind of look like Worf's race, but they have like the, they're like they're like different shapes and symbols on their skin as opposed to just like the wrinkly forehead. It's Kardashian, mm. not Kardashian. No, I know it's Kardashian. Come on. Yeah. Let's be real. <laughs> oh Lord. Anyways, it's Mieka. What do you think, Kardashians? <laughs> sure. Uh, do they look tall, Megan? Do they look tall? Here, let me see if I can do this. <laughs> They're not that handsome. Oh, eh. well, you know what? I wouldn't mind if <laughs> one were to pursue me. <laughs> hey, Matt, cheers, old John. Right? If, if you want something more, uh, if you want something a little there more you elvish, go. you can get it with the Romulans. Romulans are nice. Hold on here. Sorry to the internet for my typing. And I guess whoever, um, I don't, I can't remember Spock's race. I don't know if he's a, he's an alien, right? Yes, he is. Okay. Um, Vulcan, yeah. right? Yeah, Vulcan. Well, yeah, that's it. Yes, yeah. maybe a Vulcan. Thank you, because like I'll take that. A little point here. <laughs> that's all you need. Yeah, very elvish. You know. Yeah, it works. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm gonna roll a d6. I'm done with this question. <laughs> <laughs> like not as doing research. <laughs> <laughs> not just now. I'm learning more stuff. about Star Trek than I have in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number 16, which sounds like a repeat, so we may have answered the other one incorrectly. Uh, but question 16 is, what does Star Trek do wrong? Um, are, where do you think they fall short? Uh, the other one was, uh, what's overrated? So I think that's a fair question to ask here. <sighs> fair enough, I guess so. What falls short? Um, I, I, not, not enough love stories. I'm just going to say it. It's going to come out here. Not enough romance, you know? Mm. If you, mm-hmm. and honestly, internet, if you want to come at me with, no, this is the greatest love story ever told, come at me and tell me what it is because I'm a good romance. Maybe you'll find something new. <laughs> right? So, not enough promotion. <laughs> like, I don't know. I feel like there needs to be more promotion via social media. Like, just don't. Yeah, maybe go it's just my algorithms off, but yeah, I don't think I've ever seen any real advertising for Star Trek. Right? No. Especially like original Star Trek. I don't really see. And nor, like, yeah. hey, for how many fans there are on this planet, I don't they see don't a really lot of Star care. Trek cosplay, Mieka. Oh, nope. You yep. don't. Big Bang Theory, again, is probably the only place I've seen it. Like, yeah, like maybe like conventions. Yeah, but yeah. Nope, but, you don't see it anywhere else. I don't see him on TikTok. Maybe again, oh. maybe my algorithm's off, but I have a lot of weird shit on there. So <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say onboarding, but then I was listening to somebody, a friend of mine at work the other day, mentioned the fact that supposedly Star Trek is written that you're supposed to be able to watch any episode and instantly grasp the characters without having to watch, you know, seasons of it. Like well, supposedly be- that's the way they've written the characters is which could also be a flaw, right? It means that you're not developing a lot of depth if they're not growing over the season. If you're not going to be, if you can jump in at any point and relate to a character, that's yeah. also a problem. Maybe that's why Worf was never a badass and why he yeah. never got fired. No was character because development. No right? character they're development. The same character over the. Yeah. He wasn't built to be a badass, which means he never will so be one. My problem is either that there's not enough character mm-hmm. development or there's too much, and so I don't know where to start. Fair. I'm going to pick one end of the spectrum or the other. Yep. <laughs> With that many series, seasons, and episodes, I feel like either one of those is correct. Yeah. Oh, Lord. All right, Mieka. All right, here we go. Um, Divide it in two or three. What number did you roll? Roll eight. Eight. So uh, question four. Oh, okay. 
Um, who are your favorite Star Trek villains? Who challenged the protagonist the most and were the greatest threat? Mm. Uh, from what I remember from that one episode, I, f- I feel like the people of Star Trek, <laughs> like they go to different planets and stuff like that. Uh, so I'll just say my favorite villains were the ones from that episode where people were slowly losing their memory that, that's all i got that was actually a huge challenge too because it was like it was a time crunch they had a specific amount of time to fix everything and get off the planet <clears throat> so and out of the atmosphere actually so there you go referencing that one episode i watched Excellent. phenomenal yeah mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go with the very tropey answer of man versus self. I believe they are their own worst enemies. Mm. Infighting, self-conflict, self-doubt, that is their biggest enemy. Anything else they can conquer. I haven't seen any episodes or heard of anything where the whole ship got blown up and they all died. Or human mm. humanity was overrun. So clearly they've got everything else handled. I think their worst enemies are themselves. That's fair. Um, I'm trying. So I don't know if this would count because it's not the Star Trek series, but the movie I was talking about where the Borg exist. First Contact is the one where the Borg, I believe, and the internet is going to correct me if I'm incorrect, is when the Borg queen turns Picard into the Borg. And I remember talking to Adam about this and there was a contentious reasons as to why. But I just remember her being so incredibly attractive. And I said over-sexualized. And so I'm just going to say that's my favorite villain. Done. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Sexy Queen Bee. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Queen Borg. You know what I mean? Like, oh, there you go. I thought it actually looked like a bee. Now why? Uh... <laughs> Excellent. All right. Uh, let me roll dice here. Yep. Uh, number seven will be it. Uh, what made you fall in love with Star Trek? So I was prepared for this question because I don't love Star Trek. So rather than do that, I decided to ask AI. Are you ready for the response? Oh my God. Tell me the response. <laughs> As an AI, I don't have personal experiences or emotions, so I can't fall in love with anything, including Star Trek. However, I can understand why many people are passionate about the franchise Star Trek as it's captivated audience with its imaginative storytelling, exploration of philosophical and ethical questions, and its optimistic vision of the future, where humanity has overcome many of its current challenges. The series is known for its diverse cast and progressive values, which have resonated with fans for decades. If you're a fan, I'd love to hear what you enjoy most about Star Trek. So that is my best AI answer as to why I love Star Trek, because the AI told me. I love that. <laughs> Duh. Mika, what about you? <clears throat> what do I love most about Star Trek? What What made you fall in love with Star Trek? Oh, or you can... Um, that can-do attitude. Just keeps <laughs> on trucking, you know? <laughs> The series that will never die. (laughs) There you go. There's always something to do. They're going to figure it out. It's been going since the 60s and it's still going now. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah. No, I'll give my soft, sad answer. I, I'm not in love with it, but I love the series for other people because, it, mm-hmm. again, it's one of my dad's favorite series. It is something that he watched with my brother growing up, so it was kind of like their father-son time. Mm-hmm. It's now a series that him and my mom can watch together. Like, and it's just – my dad used to tape every episode of Star Trek in order on, like, VHS – label them and like put them on the shelf so he could rewatch them oh, wow. anytime because again this was before like pvr dvd yeah, players no, whole nine yards right Aww, so and it. it was the saddest day ever when dad finally shifted everything into dvd because when all the box sets started coming out he we bought mm. them for him on like dvd box set mm. and it was like that sweet bitterness of the fact that my dad now had to throw out all of these tapes because technology is advanced Mm-hmm. And then my dad had like the best like answer to that whatsoever. He's like, it's what Star Trek would have wanted. We're advancing technologically. And I'm like, fuck oh, off, no. dad. You're, <laughs> you're dead. Like, really, your dad is just tired of having to do it himself. Century for that one. Oh my god. So, anyways, I love Star Trek for other people, and that's what I love about Star Trek. Perfect. Aww. I feel All like right, that yeah. was a good. I feel like that was a good question to end on. You know what? I agree. Yeah. <laughs> The last remaining question is really not pertinent, and I don't have a funny answer for it. So let's end there. Yeah. Sorry. The final question for folks at home was, what are your top three favorite Star Trek series and why? And I feel like we already know. The internet knows now. We don't know enough of them. Yeah. So- I think I can name <laughs> three whole ones, and that's about it. So that would be it. I don't know nearly enough. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. And final thoughts on Star Trek, I guess, before I do our little outro. Again, it's one of those shows for me that has always been the, I want to, you know, learn more about it, but I don't have the time. I don't have the emotional strength to invest in. 
another program. I'm so yeah. happy for the people who have that and are able to enjoy it, but sorry. Right. I'm just, I'm never going to get there. No. Um, I know that Adam's going to get me to watch a few Star Trek movies and in return, he's going to sit through Twilight. Fair uh, trade. Oh, that's not yep. a fair trade. No, it's a fair trade. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. So I am like, I'm genuinely interested because you know it's a movie night and whatnot. Um, Other final thoughts. You know, I have a lot of respect for the fandom. And like I said at the beginning, don't be a problematic um, fan person. Let people just enjoy how they want to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, go Star Trek. Go Star Trek. We did it, Go Star Wars. (laughs) Go go Star Trek of Wars. Go Star Trek of Wars. (laughs) All right. Well, that's it for this mailbag episode, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. If you would like to support us, we have a store with some merch and a donate button on our website, www.itsamimic.com, as well as a Patreon. This episode and others can also be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and other podcast apps. Thanks for listening to It's a Mimic, where you never know what you're going to get. Thanks for listening to It's a Mimic, where you never know what you what. Oh God! <laughs> Thanks for listening to It's a Mimic, where you never know what you're going to get. Adam tried to make me do that from memory, and I almost got it. You did well, yeah. actually. That was good. That was perfect. I have said that ending way too many times. I was going to say you only messed up the easy end part. I know. You nailed. I was so close. I'm pretty sure I forgot like a word or two in there. But no, like... you nailed the hard parts. Well done. Oh Lord! You know what? I love nailing hard parts. Hey-o. Oh, hey. okay. All right. <laughs> well done. And that will be the outtake. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs>